What's going on everybody, it's Garmine from Garmine Tech and today we're going to be working on Proxmox 8. So Proxmox 8 did come out a little bit ago. Uh, we had some videos on how to upgrade to it and we worked with Proxmox a good amount in the past. But today we're going to be working on Proxmox 8. I actually got this Zima board over here and we're going to work on making the, what we're going to try to do is the ultimate home lab server off of the Zima board with Proxmox. So today we're going to go over how to install Proxmox 8. And then we're going to go over from there, we're going to build it out, try to build the ultimate whole lab. We're going to really see what we can build off of the Zima board and see its capabilities. Of course, the install is going to be universal to any computer you're going to use. So if you're going to use like an AMD64, you're probably doing an ARM, whatever you're going to do, the install for the Proxmox 8 is going to be the same. The end goal is going to be a little bit different, but this PC is about $200. And that's the goal right there to see how much of a home lab we can build off a $200 PC with very few add-ons so let's get right into it i do want to thank ice whale for sending the board over to me for like so i could use in the videos you know no money was exchanged nothing like that it's just me working with this hardware to really see what i could build out and i, I don't even know if it's going to work right so we're going to see how much we can really build off of this and we're going to go from there but a couple things about the zima board is i do really like it, it has two network cards so you can build a router off of this which we did do in the open sense video it's got a mini display port and two USBs that are currently full and has a barrel adapter for power. So we, have a, we have a PCI card which is really nice because we can do add-ons like this. You'll see this in a future video. And we have two SATA ports which today we're going to be using. I actually have a SATA SSD. So here we have the SSD. And then we have this, uh, it's like a Y kind of cable and it has two ports for hard drives. It has two SATA ports and a power adapter. So we can connect this to the two SATA ports and use two SATA hard drives. It's some sort of proprietary uh, adapter they have. They do have this on their Amazon site. It's about $10, I think. And this card is on the Amazon site as well, if you're interested. It's an M.2 and a SSD expansion card. It's not two M.2s, which is a little bit of a letdown. But it is an M.2 and a SATA expansion card, so you would need to use a, a SATA port that's built in on the board. Links are on Amazon. I'll have some in the description if you're interested. We're going to be using this stuff more in future videos, but today we are going to be using the SATA SSD because we are going to install Proxmox on it. But again, thank you to Icewell for sending this product over. Now let's get right into the setup. So the first thing we need to do to set up Proxmox 8 is actually come over to Proxmox's website. And then from there, we're going to download the virtual environment. There is the backup server in the mail gateway, so make sure you get the virtual environment. And you just come over here and click 8.1. You're going to scroll down a little bit to availability. There will be a downloads link. I'll have this in the description. We'll filter by in virtual environment. And then we'll filter by ISO because I like to work with ISO. It's going to be used easiest way most likely. And then over here you can grab the Proxmox VE 8.1 ISO installer. From there, if you download it, you can use something like Bolina Etcher. And you would just burn it onto a hard drive. So you would just pick your file and come over to find it and then you would just select your target drive and then you would flash it and when it's all set you could put it in your PC or your Zima board and then just go into the BIOS and change it so it boots from the, hard, the uh, USB drive so we could start the installer. So after you get the, hard, the USB disk plugged in and you change it so it boots to it, you'll get to the Proxmox menu like this and now we should be all set to start installing it. One thing to keep in mind is it's going to be a lot easier if you have a keyboard and a mouse. So if you have one of those like wireless keyboard mouse combos, it'd be a really good time to use it. Um, otherwise, you might have to just unplug your keyboard and mouse as you go. So we're going to come over to install the graphical version. Uh, my keyboard is a little slow. I'm going to click enter. And then it's going to start the installer. You'll see it pops up. It'll start working. And uh, once it goes through, it'll give us some prompts after it's done. Proxmox is Debian based. So it will install Debian and then install Proxmox over it. Um, it's just a distro of, of Debian. So our base layer will be Debian. So if you do need to do anything on the command line on your Proxmox, so it's going to be in Debian. It won't be in Ubuntu. So it might be a little different to you. We'll let this work and then we'll come back when we're ready to start installing with some menus. So now we go over here, we get to the Proxmox and Solar menu. We're going to get the EULA. You can read through that, and then we're going to hit Agree. From there, we're going to come over to selecting our hard drive we actually want to install Proxmox on. So if you have multiple drives, make sure you select the right one. 
I'm going to be installing onto my SSD like I showed you. In options, you can limit the install and size like that. It's kind of worth it depending on what you want to do, but it can really create a hassle in the future. So I'm just going to save it as it is. Click next. And we're going to enter in our information. So I am in the United States and in New York. And then I'm going to use the US English keyboard layout. I'll click next again. Now we're going to enter our password. And now this will be our root password to access the actual box. So it's important to make sure that you remember this password. So don't just type in something random. And then you're just going to enter in an email. Um, so again, make sure you remember the password because you're going to be using it every time you try to get on your Proxmox host. Click next. Now we're going to do our network settings. So it's going to pull the active network. So again, I do have two network adapters, so it's going to pull the active one. You can see I have a second one, but it's fine. And now over here, we're going to change our host name. So I'm just going to make it boremindtechpve.me. You can make it whatever you want. It's looking for a domain name, so it has to be in some sort of format of like a domain and then like a .me or .whatever. Make sure it doesn't resolve to something, because if it does resolve to something, it's going to be a bit of an issue. And then over here, if your network adapter is active, it's going to automatically pull an address if you have DHCP on your network. And then it'll pull your gateway. And then it actually pulled my DNS server automatically, but I want to use my gateway because of how I have my network set up. So if that looks a little good, you can move on from there. I'm going to show click next again. And then it gives you one more time to look through everything. Everything looks good. So I'm going to install it and we'll be back after it's installed. So one thing to keep in mind after the install finishes, it's going to reboot and since Proxmox, the USB is like your boot, your main boot drive, you got to change that. So come over to boot settings and we're just going to come over here and select your hard drive and then I'm going to save it and exit and we're going to reboot and then we're going to boot into Proxmox. So you can see we're booting into Proxmox and we're just going to give this a second and it'll load in. And when it's all done loading, you can see it's going to come over here, it's command line driven so we can just do our password. And we can log in and now we're in Proxmox, but this isn't the way you're going to want to do it. We're going to do it through the web portal. So let's do that now. So to access our Proxmox web portal for our node, we're going to do the IP address of your machine. Mine is 221. And then we're going to do colon 8006 because 8006 is the web port for Proxmox. You'll get a message like this because there's not a certificate. We'll click advanced and we'll accept the risk and continue. Now, when you first load in, you're gonna need to log in. You're gonna need to log in every time after that. So now the password, the username is root and the password is whatever you set it to. So hopefully you remembered what you used for your password before. And here we are in our Proxmox host. And you can see I have some drives. We have our summary over here. You can see our hardware. There's nothing running right now, so it's pretty low, but it gives you a nice visual of your CPUs. It gives you your memory. It gives you your hard drive space. And we can go from here, we can make a machine, we can start adding to it, but today we're just going to focus on getting the Proxmox host set up. So I'm going to show you how you make it so you get updates. Proxmox is free, there is a community edition, and you don't need a license for it, but by default you need to change it so you actually get updates. So that's what we're going to do now. There are paid versions of Proxmox that get support tickets and stuff like that, which you can get if you want, but you don't need to because there is a really good community for Proxmox. So you can either pay for a version if you'd like, or you can just use the free version and make the changes we're going to make so you get your updates. So let's do that right now. I'll have a link to this in the description. Pretty much what this is doing is just changing the Proxmox node from using the subscription-based repositories, which you don't have access to, to use the community ones, which are free. So we're going to just scroll down a little bit and we're going to look for the commands. And over here, we're going to get it. So we're going to get this in and then we're going to boot into our server and we'll work on this. So to do this, we are going to SSH in because it's going to make it a lot easier. And we're just going to hit our machine. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see. And we'll hit open. And it's the first time I'm connecting, so I'll get the warm, which is okay. Type in my username and password. And we'll do a quick clear. And if I do sudo apps, well actually I can just do apps update because I'm root. If I can type. So we're going to get some packages, but it is going to fail out because I don't have the right repos being used. I'm using the enterprise repos. I actually, if I come back into my node, 
So if you come into the update tab, you'll get like a basic update, but you're not going to get the real updates. And then if you come over to repositories, you'll see that it has down here that you're using the community based, not the community, I'm sorry, you're going to be using the enterprise one. So that's what we're going to be fixing. So let's just work on that real quick. One thing to keep in mind when you're working on the SSH terminal in your host is that you are signed in as a root. So any changes you do make are going to be final. So make sure that what you do is right before you hit save, because if you don't, it's going to be gone. So like if we're going to be editing this list, if you want to make sure you have it just in case, you could always CP it and make a backup. Uh, I'm not going to just because I'm going to comment mine out, but any other time you're working on like a Etsy file or anything important, you might want to make a backup just in case. But let's get started on this. So we're going to just do a quick nano Etsy app sources. If you tab out, it should be able to finish most of it and then we'll do PV enterprise list. And here we're going to change it from this. So I'm just going to comment that out and then we're going to just copy this. And again, I'll have this in the description so you can use it just as easily. And we'll just paste that in with control X, Y, and then I'll do nano Etsy apt sources dot list dot D. And that's gonna be slash Seth dot list. And then we'll comment that out and then we'll grab the new line. And we'll copy that over. I'll just put a new line, paste it, hit Control X, yes. And then that should be all that, and we should be all good. So I just checked over here, and I refresh it, and you see I have all these new packages. But if I come back into the session, and I do apt update, you can see I'm starting to get all these packages. So we are going to have a bit of it. You can see it's 23 packages to be upgraded, or we could actually do it this way, or we could do it right through here, and just click upgrade. And then that will open up a shell and it'll start working on doing the upgrades. So we'll give it a second and then it'll ask us if we want to do it. See, it's, it's building everything out. I'm going to click yes because I do want to update. So we have all the latest versions and it's going to work through and it's going to finish the update. So we'll give that a second when it's all done. And after a few minutes, you know, depending on how many packages you have, the update will be done. You'll see over here so we can close that out. And if I refresh, it'll work through and it'll tell me eventually the task is okay so it's just going to go over and check to make sure that there aren't any available updates so we'll let this work and should give us a pop-up in a second so you can see now it says task okay so i can close this out and there's no issues currently so now we're all up to date and we're all set the last thing i like to do on a fresh proxmox install especially now on version 8 is you come over up here in the top right corner you hit root and we change the theme to a darker theme because the white theme is very hard on the eyes so now it's a little bit more appealing and um it's not going to burn your eyes anymore because it's such a bright uh theme but this is how we set up our proxmox 8 version again we're running on our zima board and you can run it on anything you want but that's how we're going to be setting it up it's all set up now it's fully up to date and it's all ready to work one more thing to keep in mind is every time you log in or you log out or you go to make changes like updates and stuff it's going to give you that pop-up saying you don't have a subscription. That's okay. It's just Proxmox's way of trying to get you to buy a subscription, but you don't need one. And they're okay with that too, because that's why it's a community-driven program. So you can just ignore those notifications. That's not a big deal. And you can just keep on working with your Proxmox host. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that your Proxmox environments are up to date and all running nice and smoothly. Comment below what you're running Proxmox on, because I want to see what everybody else is running Proxmox on. I like to run it on really different machines and minimal machines to see what I can do with the least amount of hardware and the least money spent on projects. So thank you guys for watching. Again, big thank you to Ice Whale for sending over the Zima board for me to work with. I'll have all their links below and then I'll have some more links for like the write-ups and anything else that I use in this today's video. I appreciate everybody for watching and I will see you in the next one.